pleased to be joined by uh, Minnesota General Manager Natalie Darwitz and the three newest players to PWHL Minnesota, uh, Kendall Coyne Schofield, Kelly Panic, and Lee Steckline. Um, we're going to have an opportunity for questions in just a moment, but uh, I'd first like to hear from each of our participants and, and just to shed a little bit of light on, on this exciting time and, and, and uh, what this moment means to them. So perhaps, Natalie, start, start with you about how, how it came to be in terms of signing uh, these three uh, U.S. Uh, Olympians and such players with uh, decorated careers to date. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for being on. Really appreciate it. It's an exciting day. It's been an exciting week. Uh, in our world, and, and th thanks for being a part of that. I'm super excited to sign these three. They're world-class players, high caliber on the ice, uh, high character off the ice, and we want to build a, a program of excellence, an organization of excellence, and these three right here are a testament, and we're going to build around them. So I'm super excited for women's hockey. I'm super excited for these three. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and we're super excited now to have our first three uh, inaugural or signees for Team Minnesota. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, next here from uh, Kendall Coyne Schofield, uh, a member of uh, the U.S. National Women's Team, captain since 2019, and a big part of the PWHPA board and, and formation of uh, of this league. Kendall, I'm sure the it's a special moment for you, and please just tell us a little bit more about it. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I think it's a it's a special moment for everyone. Um, I'd first just I'd like to thank Mark and Kimber Walter, Billie Jean King, Helena Kloss, Stan Cast, and Royce Cohen, um, Jaina Hefford, and so many others uh, behind the scenes who have uh, got us to this moment with a lot more uh, to come. It's It's been a whirlwind of a journey, and I think this is something um, everyone in hockey has wanted to see for a very long time. Um, I'm extremely honored and excited uh, to join uh, Team Minnesota, the state of hockey. Um, it, you know, my conversation with Dar, I think maybe my first question was, are you sure you don't still have it? Are you sure? You, you, want to, you want to lace up the skates? Um, I had the honor to to cross paths with, with Natalie and um, early, early on in my career when I was just, you know, I think I still had braces and looked up to her as a player and um, now to be able to, um, you know, be on the same team as, as her and to get an offer from her and is, um, was really, really special. And um, I think specifically for me coming back to the game as a mom and um, hearing the support, uh, it wasn't, you know, do you think you still have it? I know you still have it and um, never questioned my ability coming back, which I think some have, you know, what, what's she going to be like when she gets back? And um, that was never a question um, from Natalie. So, you know, just starting off on that foot for me is, um, you know, was really important. And I'm so excited to be able to continue to be teammates with um, the teammates I've missed for the last half of the year, Lee Stackline and Kelly Panic, and obviously extremely, extremely excited to see who our teammates are to come, uh, come the 18th um, with at the draft and then following the free agency period after that. It's kind of, you mentioned the state of hockey and two players, your, your teammates are no stranger to, to Minnesota, uh, born and raised, uh, starting with uh, Kelly from Plymouth, Minnesota. Uh, Kelly, maybe just a few words about what it means to sign and, and represent your home state. Yeah, I'd like to echo um, what Kendall said, just thanking all the people. And I'm going to throw her name in there because I know from like a player perspective, um, she's been leading this charge since since 2019. And for many people, it would maybe take away from your ability on the ice. And it's never once done that. And I truly don't think we'd be here in this position with without Kendall and, and the other people that she mentioned as well. And um, yeah, I mean, when, when I spoke to Natalie on the phone as well, it was kind of a full circle moment. Um, I shared with her that I actually played against her in like the alumni game, my first ever time putting on a gopher Jersey. So, and actually I think she was the, the assistant coach who I took my first, uh, visit with at Minnesota. So to have, uh, this opportunity to join her team, stay at home, um, play in front of family and friends and a bunch of people that have been a part of my hockey career, um, all the way through up to this point is, it means the world to me. Um, you know, I've always been a very proud Minnesotan, a proud representative of the state of hockey, and I'm excited to to keep it going. Thanks, Kelly, and for Lee, the uh, one of the prides of uh, Roseville, Minnesota. Just your your thoughts on uh, reuniting with uh, Kelly and Kendall, who you've uh, shared the ice with many times. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm I'm so excited to be here, uh, just to have the league at this point. As Kelly said, um, so many people to thank, but. As much as she hates it, I just have to say again, we would not be here with, without Kendall. 
Um, so to get to continue and now be on the same team as her um, in, in this league, uh, this new league, this dream uh, is just really special. And then to continue playing alongside Kelly Panic. Uh, just thrilled. She's um, she's uh, been a teammate for a really long time, um, and then getting to do it all in the state of hockey with Natalie Darwitz as your general manager sounds pretty surreal. Um, so very excited. It's it's a huge day, and and just grateful that we we get to do this and start things soon here. Very excited to get the year going. Thank you all. We'll take questions now, folks. If you have a question, uh, please use the Zoom console to raise your digital hand. Uh, I'll call on you. Uh, one by one. Uh, at that time, please unmute. Uh, kindly introduce yourself, including the outlet that you are representing. It's important that we we hear that just so that we can uh, grow familiarity across our uh, community. We'll take our first question from uh, John Warrow. John, go ahead, please. John Warrow with the Associated Press. Uh, congratulations to the three of you. And I've got a question for Natalie and also one for Kelly. Um, Natalie, there's a report out there that Kelly was the first player um, signed by the PWH, uh, PWHL. Is, is that correct? And, and, and there, there has to be a distinction to that, um, given the history of the, you know, just, just the historic moment of this, of the launching of this league. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Kelly was the first one to sign. Um, and, and, you know, it, for me, it was a no brainer, uh, as far as Kelly and leave being from the state of hockey. And it was important for us as a franchise that, we have local players here, here to build a game. So um, Kelly was a no brainer for us. Um, she pulled the trigger pretty fast, which I love. Um, <laughs> I love those types. Like she knew right away, she pulled the trigger and just a little fun backstory. Um, Kelly's agent was actually my agent when I was playing. So it was a really uh, casual conversation with Brant uh, to say, hey, let's go, this is what we have to offer. And uh, he knows that I'm no be uh, bold about me. and um we just we just did the deal really fast so I think at the end of the day I think just hearing from these three especially Kendall or sorry Lee and uh Kelly they love being from the state of hockey they take great pride and excitement from being here um so it was really a, a situation where Kelly was ready to go from the get-go and we had a great conversation she shared the story about how we played against one another at the alumni game she was referring to at Minnesota so um, we just have history here and, and it was a, a comfort level that we all had with each other. Um, and, and so Kelly kind of pulled the trigger pretty quickly, which was a lot of fun. And for Kelly, just to be the first player to sign a P uh, to, to agree to a PWHL contract, not only that, but I understand you also, um, got a hole in one over the weekend. So it's been quite a, it's been quite a good stretch for you. Um, yeah, just touching on the first point first, um, like Natalie said, I think it was no secret that this is where I wanted to be. Um, and when that opportunity come, came along, I was ready and pretty decisive in that way. So it was exciting, really exciting day. And um, I mentioned it as well to many people. I'm like, this is not how I thought this weekend was going to go. So it was a pretty exciting opportunity, obviously. And then the hole in one is just a whole lot of luck. That's all I'll say <laughs> about that. But it was it made for a, a pretty fun weekend. Thank you. John, take uh, the next one from Jared Book, please. Jared Book, uh, eyes on the prize. Um, question for Kendall uh, first. Uh, what was it like to be in the room negotiating the CBA and then um, when push comes to stuff, sign a contract, you know, just a couple of weeks afterwards? Um, can, you, can you take us through a little bit of that process? Yeah, uh, the negotiations definitely took more than a few weeks, um, took more like a few months. Um, but honestly, it was an honor to sit in that room on behalf of all the players. And, um, you know, I, I said it to the players before, while there were five of us in there, if there could have been 100 or 200 of us in there, I think every single player um, would have been in that room if it was possible. And so, uh, but they were very um cordial conversations, collaborative conversations. That's the league that, um, you know, we wanted to see through. And so um, I think, you know, one of the first things Stan Kasten said uh, when we were in New York was this is going to be the most collaborative um, collective bargaining uh, process he's ever been a part of. And obviously he's been a part of a lot more than, than all of us as players. And so, um, and it was, it was extremely collaborative and um, you know, so, but again, it was, it was an honor to be there to, it was, it was a lot of hard work, um, you know, but without the collaboration of the players, uh, the unity of the players, um, the vision of the players, uh, the CBA doesn't look the way that it does today. And um, what was your second question? 
No, that, that was that was only one question. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, and just a, a quick one for for Natalie. Um, having the number one pick in the draft, did that change your uh, your your process or your think thinking going into free agency at all? No, it did not. Uh, my goal is to get the best players possible. I think we have three in front of you today. Um, hopefully. Uh, things come in threes. We have Kelly as the first ever signee. We have the first round draft pick. Um, so we, we would love to have that third number one too. Um, and, and hopefully in June. So um, no, it's uh, it did not play into my, my thought process. I, I had these three earmarks from the get go and targeted, and I'm just so grateful and happy that it worked out and they wanted to be a part of this organization and build something special. Thank you. Jared, uh, next question we'll take from uh, Erica Ayala, please. Thank you, uh, Erica Ayala, representing CBS Sports today. Um, Lee, I wanted to ask you a question first, and then I have one for Kendall as well. But um, you, of course, as has already been mentioned, have been a, a part of Minnesota hockey, a Minnesotan. So you know that the, the Minnesota Whitecaps have kind of had to claw and fight their way into women's pro hockey landscape uh, in Minnesota. So what does it feel like now to be one of the first people to sign for a Minnesota team, a uh, brand new league, and Minnesota is a part of, uh, you know, the original group? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the Whitecaps, as you mentioned, they have been – uh, a huge part of not just pro hockey, but uh, girls and women's hockey, um, something that has had a lot of success recently, but they've been um, pioneers from the beginning. Um, I, I feel extra grateful knowing, you know, the founders of the Whitecaps, the Broat family, um, being from Roseville, I've gotten to know them quite well. Uh, and just the way they have impacted and shaped my hockey career um, is something I, I am truly grateful for and to, to hopefully get to carry that on and continue that with this, this new league that we've created again, getting to stay in Minnesota, um, where we have an amazing fan base and hopefully, um, the girls still love coming to watch us play. Um, and yeah, it, it definitely, there is still a change, but whatever we can do to continue what they've started and carry it on, um, very excited to be a part of that. Looking forward to it. And as promised, Kendall, I wanted to come to you. You mentioned just a little while ago uh, the, the negotiation process with Stan. And he mentioned in one of the, the video conferences that we've had with him that there were a few things that went back and forth. So if you had to maybe put a percentage on it coming from either your individual perspective or maybe the PA perspective, like how close to exactly what you wanted um, did you did you get in this first round, uh, this first CBA that will take you through the first eight years of, of the PWHL and maybe also related, maybe what are some of the things that are high on the priority list for, for the PA as, as you start um, getting things established with the league now? Uh, that's a great question, Erica. I think in any negotiation and being through a few uh, myself, along with Lee and Kelly with USA Hockey, um, I think you leave every negotiation realizing you're not going to get everything you wanted and you're, you're going to feel like, oh, we didn't get this or we didn't get that. But then you also have to turn the page and recognize all the things that you you did get. And I think in this process, it's not a matter of getting and, and, and not getting or winning and losing because I think we all won. Um, and I think that was how the conversation um, was was had throughout of we want, we all want this to be successful. We all want this to be around for a hundred plus years. And so let's start there. Let's start with the vision. Let's, and let continue the conversation from there. So uh, in terms of percentage, I think it'd be, uh, it'd be hard for me to give you a, a percentage. Um, but I would say majority. Um, I think majority of the things, um, you know, we, we saw in our vision, uh, we saw those through. Um, and then, you know, but I, I think, again, I think you have to remember the vision too, is not year one, it, it's year 100. Um, and so we, where we start today is going to set us up for success in the future. And that's tough in year one and year two, there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be things where we're like, oh, shoot, we should have done this. Um, so I think my answer would be majority. And in terms of priority list, I think like anything, um, you always want the conditions to, to, to be greater. You always want the salaries to be greater. You always want, you know, the, the number of players in the league to be greater. I mean, those are, that's just from my perspective, not actuals, but I think, you know, when you think of 
growth. Those are those are three prime areas where you hope to see this league grow as years years to in years to come. Thanks, Kendall. Thanks, uh, Erica. We'll take uh, the next ones from uh, Elias and then Ian. Uh, hey guys, uh, Elias Lorati, freelance journalist from Montreal. Um, I'm starting to see a growing trend, Natalie, that Canadian players are signing in Canadian markets, and now we've had American players sign in American markets. Do you think maybe this this league has the potential to be like a Canada versus U.S. showdown in in your sense? Well, I think with the startup of our league, I think, um, you know, Jaina and, and company wanted to provide those top three players a say in what markets they wanted to go to. And naturally, I think you're going to have players go to markets they're comfortable with. And naturally, it's been Canadian players in the Canadian markets and the U.S. players in the U.S. markets. However, in, in two weeks in, 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 in the draft, that can become fair game. Um, again, my staff and I are going to do the best we can to build a championship roster. Uh, we're going to uh, talk to these three right here and get their input of um, who would be good fits in the locker room and, and, and to build that culture of the team that we want to embody. And if that includes some Canadian players, some European players, and that will help us, we're certainly going to go that route. Um, but if it doesn't and, and it creates a little bit of a U.S.-Canada rivalry, it's a tremendous rivalry in sports. So that's only going to grow the game. And if I can ask a follow-up, you guys seem to know each other all so well. Was it more of like a one phone call type thing or was it over multiple phone calls for the deals being negotiated? Um, do you want me to, yeah, you're referring to me again? Yeah. Yes. I, I called uh, each of these players individually. Okay. Um, this was, um, it was not a group, a group thing. It was, I wanted to, I wanted each of these three to know how valued they are as, as number one, as people that I believe they're going to be a great addition to what we want to embody uh, and represent as, as this team. Um, that's really important. Number two, they're all tremendous hockey players, um, you know, and then I can go along and list their accolades. But at the end of the day, if you don't feel the energy from these three and how the camaraderie already is, and how cohesive they are. That's exactly what we're looking for. And, and I'm super excited that we got these three and, and hopefully we can just build on that. Thanks, appreciate your time. Yep, thank you. Cool. Ian and then Carissa, please. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Ian Kennedy here from the Hockey News. I'm going to uh, ask either Lee or Kendall, whoever wants to, obviously Kendall, you've been the captain of uh, Team USA. Lee, you were the PWHPA Defender of the Year last year, but. Kelly is obviously just as integral and important part of this whole puzzle as either one of you in terms of building Minnesota's team. And I'm hoping that uh, perhaps either one of you can speak to uh, exactly what you think Kelly brings to this roster and why she was one of those very first calls as well. Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, I've played with Kelly for quite a while now. Um, and she is truly one of the smartest hockey players I think I've I've ever played with. Um, her hockey IQ is out of this world and her ability to play really any role is quite special. Um, and getting to practice with her day in and day out, um, she is constantly pushing herself and um, trying new things and working together, you know, with the D or wings or whatever. She's She'll tell you she's not afraid to chat um, and, and work things out. And I think that's going to be uh, amazing as we build a team here, um, you know, to have her on the ice with her hockey IQ and then off the ice, helping everyone make sure we're on the same page, working things out. Um, yeah, she's just a really special person, a special hockey player. Um, grateful to have played with her for as long as I have. And again, excited to, to get the chance to do it again. And just to add to the consistency um, and the reliability, I think, you know, we, we're going to play a 24 game regular season schedule um, in addition to a playoff schedule. Uh, I think Kelly is someone, you know, what you're getting every night she steps on the ice. And I think that's uh, one of the greatest assets you can have as a player is, you know, what you know, what you're getting in your player. And um, that's Kelly and a great person too. She's already looking for places for me to live in Minnesota along with Lee. <laughs> You're welcome, Kelly. Thank you for that answer, both of you. But uh, uh, Kelly, I, I know that, uh, you know, there's a lot of Minnesota connections here, but 
I'm wondering just how important that identity is for you and for this team to be, you know, an integral part of the state of hockey and to continue to build on that legacy um, that we've already talked about a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it is the state of hockey, and I think um, it is just such a rich, I'm going back to Lee's answer about the Whitecaps and how great of a fan base um, there was for that, and just how many, I mean, we like to brag about it as Minnesotans, like, we grew up in the ideal hockey scenario in so many ways. Like you got to play with the people that you went to high school with, which I know for so many people, like even in Chicago, like Kendall didn't, didn't have that. She had to play on a club team and it's, everything's just so local and it's people you grow up with. And obviously then going to Minnesota, like the team is, I think when I was there was probably 80, 70, 80% Minnesotans. Um, so it's just pretty special. I think like, again, uh, being in this place where, you know, in the U S hockey isn't, the, big, the biggest sport for every every state and here it is and um you know even for the minnesota wild i mean they're still pushing for their first stanley cup um since becoming minnesota wild and just to see the fan base that they have and i'm going to put a little side note in there that i think minnesota female sports have been better maybe than the men so hopefully that trend continues uh for us but yeah i mean it's just really special for me personally like all of my family lives in minnesota um except my sister who lives across the world. But so it's going to be special for them to be able to come watch. And I know uh, the same can be said for Lee. And it's obviously not too far of a drive for Kendall and her family. But um, yeah, I just think that speaks to to how important it, it's been in my career to, to grow up this way. Thank you so much, everybody. And congratulations. Thanks, Ian. We'll go uh, Carissa, then uh, Haley, please. Thanks, Paul and Ashley. Uh, congratulations to all of you guys. Very exciting day. Um, just another question for Kendall on the CBA negotiations. Um, just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the negotiations in 2017 with USA Hockey um, helped you, I guess, in that process and how it prepared you for that. And related to that, um, when we're talking about things that are kind of non-negotiable or um, you know priorities at the bargaining table, um, where did the language around parental leave and around not being able to terminate a player's contract because they're pregnant, things like that, where where did that stand on your uh, priority list when you went into those meetings? I think the experience from 2017 um, helped tremendously being you know, at a bargaining table once before, um, having the familiar face of John Langle from Ballard Spar um, with us along the way. Um, you know, he was the lead negotiator in 2017, um, and that was our first contract with USA Hockey. And then, um, although he wasn't the lead negotiator in this situation, Susan Susan Davis was, and she did a phenomenal job. Um, I was able to kind of recognize the the roles, the responsibilities, uh, understand maybe some of the tactics and how the conversation works and what, you know, you have a conversation, what the follow-up looks like, where are we going from here? Like you said, what are our non-negotiables? Where are things that we're maybe um, willing to give on in the end and just some of the strategies and tactics. Um, and I think, you know, what is, what was really special for me is just being able to learn too, um, learn from all of these incredible people, the, the lawyers at the table and um, reaching out to experts, you know, throughout the other leagues, the WNBA, the NWSL, learning how, you know, their best practices, learning if they were to go back to year one and day one, what would they do differently? Um, or what would they make sure we fight for that, that they don't have, or that it took them 25 years to get. And so um, just the, all the conversation uh, that was had to get us to where we are today and in the collective bargaining process. And um, in terms of the, the uh, paternal leave policies, um, pregnancy policies, um, you know, I think there was a long list of things that, you know, nothing is more important than the other. It's, this is, this is how we want our players to be treated in this league. Um, this is how you should want the players to be treated in this league. And a lot of those things were non-negotiables for them as well. They weren't, um, you know, uh, when I mean them, I mean the ownership group and I hate separating us because it was such a collaborative process, but, um, you know, making sure that, that players, um, if they are able to, they can be a working mom and play hockey, play hockey. They don't have to make a choice between being a mom and, and, and being a hockey player. They can, they can do both. And that's on that stance. But I mean, you know, when you look at the housing stipend, and the CBA, or sorry, excuse me, the, the, the salary breakdown, um, you know, the meals, the pre-training, post-training meals, pre-game, post-game meals, the, 
the hotels. I mean, everything that we could possibly think of. You have to remember, this was a blank sheet of paper when we started this. Um, and so it's not perfect. There's going to be things that we're going to look look back on and be like, okay, write it down um, back to Erica's question. Okay, what are the things in, in year eight that we want to do over or we, we need to be better? Um, those are going to come up. It, it's inevitable. Um, but I think we're at a pretty great starting point um, to ensure the success and viability of this league. And just a quick follow-up uh, for you, Kendall, as well. You just mentioned uh, looking for a place in Minnesota. So I know the last time you moved uh, or you played in Minnesota, I should say, um, I think you said you were you would fly in on weekends and you would sleep on Hannah Brandt's air mattress or something like that because you made like $7,000 a year. Correct me if that's wrong. Um, so you are moving to Minnesota. This is, you know, this is going to be uh, enough to, to warrant that move. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, it's it's uh, really exciting. I mean, I was in the gym this morning and um, was able to tell after the news broke, was able to tell some of the, the people in the gym, oh, I'm playing for Team Minnesota. And and someone responded, well, you're not moving there, are you? I'm like, well, you wouldn't ask my husband if he was moving to the city. He just signed to play professionally, would you? And and so it was kind of that like aha moment of like, you know, and then my husband responded, who was also in the gym. He goes, no, we're moving there because uh, he's equally as excited. So, um, yeah, no, I think it, it's really exciting. And again, thank, I'm so thankful to have such great teammates. And I'm not joking. Kelly was texting me this morning along with Sophia Shaver. And Lee's already texting me offering her mom to help babysit. Um, so uh, there's going to be a lot of help. And it, it is exciting. Um, you know, it's it's a dream come true. And yeah, we're we're going to be prepared to to move the the whole crew up there uh, when the time is right. Thanks. Congratulations Chris. to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Krista. Uh, Haley, then Elaine, please. Thanks, Paul. Um, Haley Salvian from The Athletic. I guess I'll start with Kelly. Um, you know, you've played with Lee Steckline for a while now. You guys would have played together at Minnesota and obviously on the national team. I'm curious if you can tell us what it means for a team to have somebody like Lee Steckline anchoring your blue line. Um, yeah, I've been very fortunate enough to be on her team, which is great because I don't want to go against her. I Lee mentioned us practicing together almost every single day for the last, what, eight years, like something crazy. But any single time you know you're going against her, you're like, this is terrible. I think last one time last year in a PWHPA game, I legitimately started laughing. So I was on a one-on-one -on -one against her. I'm like, we do this way too many times throughout the entire year that this just feels like it's repeating itself. But she is, in my opinion, I think if you want to prevent a goal, if you need a big stop, if you need any big defensive situation, she is the defender you have on the ice. She communicates which I know we've always talked about being a big thing for the two of us when we're on the ice together. That communication piece is huge. She's calm. She's steady. Um, she's very, very consistent. She's been consistent for 10 plus years. Um, I think she's been severely underrated in a lot of ways, especially offensively. I've seen it firsthand. Her shot has improved. She hits me with it all the time. So I get mad, but, um, but it's, it's hard. It's quick. Um, you don't always realize it because she's so tall, but she's shifty, um, to have a player like her on the ice for your team. It just, I think brings confidence to every, every other person. And then to have her in a locker room, um, she is the first person to make sure everyone is okay, settled, um, ready to go have what they need. Um, she's always thinking about others. Um, for her, it's always been about the team first and for someone who, has, I mean, she was an 18 year old Olympian um, or 19 year old Olympian. Like she could have an ego and she never has. And so it's, I mean, I think I texted her after we both knew we made the decision. Like I, I wasn't ready to not, not be teammates with her. Um, yeah. It's just a blessing every day. Thank you. I'm sorry Lee, to make uh, Kelly say all that in front of you, uh, but I'm sure it's nice to hear. I've got to follow up maybe for you Lee. Um, on a different track, you know, we hear all the time about the state of hockey and obviously, you know, people involved in hockey and in sports, like we see the way that sports fans in Minnesota are different. And like, we see the support for the wild and college hockey, high school hockey. I mean, the Minnesota Lynx and the WNBA get crazy attendance numbers. So I'm curious to ask somebody who is from Minnesota, like what makes 
people from Minnesota different when it comes to this sport and just sports fandom and, and what that's going to mean for women's pro hockey in the state? Yeah, it's a great question. It's, I didn't realize how different Minnesota was, uh, I think until I went to my first USA camp, but you know, U15 maybe. Uh, and like Kelly mentioned, I had played with the same girls um, growing up through high school for summer hockey, you know, like actual season. Um, and I realized how special that was, um, and how, how it was possible because we had so many girls playing hockey and, and that that was what was really different. Um, that it was very common to just sign up, um, to sign up your child for hockey. Neither of my parents played hockey and, um, and here we are all three of, of us, um, my other two siblings, we grew up playing hockey. They still play hockey. Um, and it's, um, it's awesome to see it continue to grow. I, I know Minnesota, it, it feels like, um, there are more people playing than ever. I just did a, a, a try hockey, uh, I think, it, I think it's a wild night last night and there were 65 kids on the ice. Um, out in, in a smaller suburb. Uh, and so uh, just the the way we continue to encourage kids, uh, all kids to play, I think has been what has made Minnesota the state of hockey. And it is what makes those um, those fans <laughs> as good as they are, you know, as you said, for the wild. Um, and then it's been awesome to see how we also support our women's sports. As you mentioned, the Lynx, um, we, it's it, and when I played for the Whitecaps um, just for that one year, um, again, just the the support we had around it was awesome. So uh, I, I I know we will have great support here, and, and that's part of uh, what made signing here so easy. I mean, just one of another million reasons. But um, yeah, very grateful, Minnesota. I'm biased, of course, but I, I do think we're we're doing some things right. And if I can throw one at Kendall, Paul, sorry, um, I don't want to keep everybody on for too long, but uh, Kendall, I'm curious what your first foray into free agency was like. Was it as stressful as you maybe thought? Was it more fun? Did you get advice from your husband? He's gone through free agency before. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was definitely nerve wracking. Um, just especially given my situation, I didn't know if the phone would ring given I haven't played hockey since, or I haven't played a game since December 20th. I mean, who's counting though? Um, so I was like, oh, I don't know if anyone will still value me or see me like I was the, the in the player I was before, um, you know, I got pregnant and, and had to take the time off. So uh, that part, I definitely like, I thought about, um, so I was nervous and I did turn to my husband. I was like, is this how you feel every year? Cause he's been a guy who has signed a lot of one-year deals. So every year he's, it seems like he's a free agent. I'm like, he's like, yeah, it's stressful, isn't it? I'm like, it sure is. Um, he's like, he said it was a lot easier following than it is leading. Cause, um, so yeah, but it, it was, it was exciting. Um, it was exciting to, to FaceTime Lee and Kelly when we all found out we were, um, the three players from Minnesota. And again, I, I know I said it off the hop, the top, but I'm really thankful for um, Natalie's support, um, you know, for her belief in, in me, um, you know, and I think it just shows the, the culture that um, she's wanting to build, um, given the fact that, you know, she didn't write me off from the beginning. And I think, you know, there, that's definitely a strong possibility for some, um, since I, I haven't played um, in a game since December. Thanks, Haley. Um... Go Elaine, Alex, and then uh, Corinne, please. Hi, Elaine Shercliffe, uh, Full Press Hockey. Uh, this question is for Natalie. And uh, now that you have your first three, uh, what kind of skills or type of players are you looking to help supplement the rest of the roster that um, kind of are cohesive to the skills that these three have? Yeah, great question. Uh, well, obviously with the first overall pick, we're super excited about that. Um, you know, I think when we talk about what we want to embody at Minnesota and, and how do we want to play, um, I'm glad we have Lee because I love offense. So uh, if Lee can lock us down back on the on the blue line, that'd be great. But, you know, what I envision of our, our, our program and our organization is we're going to be a lot of fun to watch. We're going to rely on skill. It's going to be fun. It's, it's a kid's game. I always mention that. And that's how we're going to play. 
Are we gonna be on the same sheet of music? Absolutely, we're gonna know exactly what's going on, but at the same time, we wanna allow our players freedom uh, and excel at the skills that they have um, and then utilize their teammates and their skills. And then it just becomes a lot of fun. As we go throughout the draft, um, it's going to be significant for us to build around these three. Um, it's going to be significant to, to get a good goalie. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what we want to embody is a team that is fast. We play hard. Um, and the goal is that well, whoever we compete against, we want them going, oh, I hate playing against Minnesota. It feels like there's 15 of them on the ice. And that we just want to be coming at teams left and right in waves. So uh, as we build our roster here in draft, um, it's one thing to say, we want this player, we want this player. We have to be really prepared because we don't know what other teams are gonna do. We don't wanna um, be surprised by anything. We wanna be, to, to us, preparation is key. Um, so if another team maybe takes a player that we're looking at, we want to be like, yep, here's the next person we're going with. They're going to fit our mold. They're going to fit inside our locker room. Um, so the next week and a half, we're going to do our due diligence and make sure, um, we're doing our research and we have the best pool of players, no matter what scenario happens in the draft. And then really quick to Kendall, um, I too grew up right outside of Chicago and I remember how hard it was to find places to play, um, do you feel like a program of this caliber will help people in the Chicago area understand the importance and growth of girls hockey and develop, like want to invest in it? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Chicago is a, is a fantastic market. It's a growing market. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's one for, for a later time. That would be a pretty cool uh, if Chicago would ever be considered an expansion market, but Obviously, we don't make those decisions, um, but I'm biased that uh, it would be a great market. And um, but, I, you know, I think I think re regardless, Chicago, Indiana, Wisconsin, I'm just saying the surrounding states here everywhere. Um, I think there's going to be young boys and girls that are going to grow up with, with with the same dream. And that's something that we've talked about for a very long time is closing the gap on what a young boy and a young girl can dream to become in the sport as it pertains to being a hockey player. Um, and for, for so long, I know I said to Natalie, when I spoke to her this weekend, I, I said, gosh, I wish this was around when you were playing. Uh, Cause I think you'd still be playing uh, is what I said to her. But um I think, you know, regardless of in Chicago, if you're in Minnesota, of course, the access uh, to the team in Minnesota will be great for all of, for, you know, everybody in that state. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you have people coming in from all over the place uh, to watch, watch us play, to see the new league um, and just the exposure, whether there's a team in your market or not, um, you know, for a lot of young people to say, I, I, I can be a professional hockey player when I grow up, if, you know, if I'm good enough to be one. Um, and that's what hopefully this opportunity, um, you know, hopefully the kids will see that opportunity at whether they're in a market or not in a market when they turn on the TV and they see, you know, women's professional hockey, just like they see men's professional hockey. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, Alex and Karen, please. Hi, oh, thanks so much for taking the time. Alex Sazzi with The Messenger. Uh, Natalie, I'll start with you. Um, as Kendall alluded a, a minute ago in a question or an answer, um, you know, we've unfortunately seen athletes and workers in general discriminated against because of pregnancy and their maternity leave status. And I'm curious for you, like, what message do you hope that it sends that, that you're signing Kendall, given that she hasn't played since last December? It's huge. And... Other, other people are doing it. If you look at Alex Morgan in soccer, um, Julie Ertz, um, it's possible. And what I'm so excited about is for Kendall to show and be a role model to others that it's possible. Um, and you know, as, as we were talking with Kendall throughout the free agency process, um, I, I think so often and Kendall alluded to it too, that we have to choose. We're either choosing our career, we're either choosing motherhood. Why can't we do both? And it starts with people in leadership positions. Um, my boss, when I was going to coach D3 at a school called Hamlin University in St. Paul, I was pregnant with my first child. And I immediately told him, no, I was like, no, I'm pregnant. I want to be a mom. That, that's important to me. And he's like, wait a minute, how can we make this work? Like it's, it's people in leadership positions that I am in, usually males that don't understand. So how do we make this work? You love hockey. You want to be a mom. How do we do both? And we worked out a plan. I wasn't, I wasn't a nine to five clock and in clock and out. 
Um, he said, I know you're going to do your job. You're going to do it the best of your abilities. And you are going to be a mom too. And if there's a meeting or something that you can't make because your, your soon to be son is sick, um, then you call me and we, we figure it out. And so I just gave Kendall the same thing. She's a mom first. It's a really a huge privilege. She knows that. I know that. Um, and she's going to be a role model firsthand for her teammates to go. If you want to still, if you want to do this and, and raise a family and still play, you can do it. She's going to be a testament to that. And so I'm so excited for Kendall. I, I think um, she already has the innate characteristics that she's going to prove people wrong. Um, but that's not why she's doing it. She's doing it because she loves hockey. She loves, she wants to build a family and raise a family. Um, so I just think this is a special moment uh, for everyone involved. And this is, this is the way it should be in the new world. And, and, and if I have a hand in trying to help that and, and she can, uh, allow others to, uh, have a vision of, they can do the same. That's what it's all about. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Kendall, I'm going to keep having people talk about you if you don't mind, uh, Kelly and Lee both kind of alluded to it in your opening remarks. Um, but given that both of you weren't on the PWHPA board, uh, you weren't on the CBA negotiating committee, as far as I'm aware, can you speak about just kind of like what that perspective was like on the outside and, and seeing somebody like Kendall kind of push through to make these things happen? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, first and foremost, having Kendall be a leader through a handful of negotiations over the last five years, um, there's just a lot of trust knowing that she's, I think has an incredible ability to think about people in all different situations. She's not just thinking about a national team player or a non-national team player, or she's thinking about the entire um, group of people. So I know that she's always thinking about what's right for, or what's best for everyone, um, not just herself, not just for the minority, um, but really everyone. And I think it's, I think I said at the beginning as well, like she does more work off the ice for things that probably even people like myself don't even realize or maybe take for granted a little bit. Um, and she's able to do it without ever bringing her down, without ever affecting her play, without ever affecting her attitude. Um, she's always very gracious when she says all those things at the beginning about how she wishes a hundred people could be in those meetings. She means it. Um, I've heard her say it and show it millions of times. Um, and I think like she doesn't get enough I mean, she doesn't get enough recognition for all the work that she does on behalf of all of us players. And a lot of it is because she always pushes it down. But I hope that, you know, like I, I don't remember how I said it to but I'm like, Kendall's coming to Minnesota. Does she want my house? Like she'll, she can take it. Whatever Kendall needs, like I, I'm there to help her because truly like I can't, I mean, from a league standpoint, um, I don't think we're here without her. And and then being able to be her teammate through it all, like she just is the most gracious teammate while also being the most competitive, the most focused, the most driven. Like she just somehow does it all while still being like one of the best people to be around and the most thoughtful as well. Yeah, Kelly said it beautifully. It's we we wouldn't be here without her. Um, she is so dedicated and passionate about what she believes this league should be. Um, and I know it took a lot of people but like my trust is always it's like Kendall's in that room and um and and whatever she needs like Kelly said I am here to support it but uh I believed in her vision and um you just know that she won't give up until until it happens and and here we are and you know I, I don't I'm not trying to take credit away from any of the other amazing people who also contributed and did all of that work but um, I, I think for a lot, it, it's knowing Kendall's in that room, um, knowing, as Kelly said, how genuinely she cares about each person outside of that room, whether she's met you one time or you've been friends for years, um, she cares so much that that she's going to do whatever she can uh, to, to do what she thinks needs to be done. And that um, it's an awesome characteristic to have in, in a leader and a teammate. Um, she carries all of those things right onto the ice and it's made her the absolute beast that she is. So um, I, I am just as excited, I think, as Kendall to be back on the ice together um, and, and play more hockey. Thanks, guys. That was really nice. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, Alex. We'll take uh, one last question from uh, Karen, please. Hi, uh, Kathy Nice from Hockey Buzz. Uh, my question is for Natalie as well. Um, it seems um, quite obvious that you really value local talent from your signings right here. And you've told us that you really like offense and you want to play an exciting game. Uh, with the draft approaching, are you going to be able to um, resist the urge of picking Taylor Hayes as first pick when your team doesn't have a goalie yet? Because it's going to be a good long while before you speak again with the snake draft. Correct. So we'll have the first draft and then uh, 12 and 13. So we'll have to sit on our hands for a while. Um, we do have a really good idea who our first round draft pick will be. And um, we're excited about that. Or hopefully she's excited about it as well. Um, but a goalie will be significant for us. And we'll look to obviously grab a great goalie uh, some point throughout the draft. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This time I see no further hands and we're almost at the top of the hour. So I think it's a good time to to, to wrap. But uh, as we do, I'd like to thank you all for your participation and your. Music.